This week we're starting on the Pullman's dinette and this is looking down the boat towards the bathroom and this will be the back that the kitchen butts up to. So there's a lot to figure out on this. Um, it's normally they're six foot four long because this is going to be made into a double bed afterwards for, you know, when friends stay over. But it looked enormous when we put all the sides up. And so we decided to go for six foot two because we don't have very many tall friends anyway. Um, and it looks better and it'll give me another couple of inches in the kitchen. So I'll show you where we're at at the moment. This is the diner from the other end and we've curved the top, sort of American diner style. Doesn't mean we're gonna put red leatherette on though. We were thinking maybe about curving it down in here as well, but I had a feeling it might look too much like cinema seats if we did that. Obviously, the contrast of the brown wood against the white walls is making it look very blocky at the moment. But that should disappear once it's painted and finished. Oops, here comes Henry, just emptying the wee bucket from the compost loo. <laughs> Good timing. And then in here is the space between. And the bar across the bottom is the height of the step. So we thought that we would use it for storage underneath so we'll have a drawer in the middle bit and then here where the bench is going to go there'll be storage under the benches and we've just got to decide whether the storage will go all the way to the floor which will make them very deep or just down to the step because obviously you want as much storage as possible but you want to be able to see where you've put stuff and then the table will come somewhere around oh, it's gone dark that's it around this line here where the two panels join so that we'll be sitting up and able to look out of the side window along the towpath or out to the canal so that's what we're figuring out at the moment just cutting all the bits of wood to build the frame on and we'll see how we go. Stop press. We've been looking for an old dining table that we can cut up to make the table for the dinette. And we need it to be four foot. And this one has just come up free on Facebook. So we're going to use that bit at the end there. Take out the middle bit and cut the remainder there going down there so this curved bit little curve will go in under the gunnel brace it across the middle and that's it job done and we paid the princely sum of 10 pounds for that and that was just for delivery and then we can use the legs or two of the legs underneath bargain okay end of the first day working on this bit of primer just to make it look a bit smaller We've got the base all made and the spaces for the drawers at the bottom. Now we've just got to start thinking about how the drawers are going to hang in there and the benches. So I'm going to leave Henry to it now. I'm off to bang a drum with XR and I shall be back next week and we'll see how he's got on <laughs> by then. Now that the dinette back is up, I can be getting on with the fireplace surround. 
I've already glued down the fireboard onto the plywood and the cement board on top of the fireboard. Um, I was going to get uh, cement board screws, um, but we were scratching our heads at screw fix and in the end it turned out that the most likely screw was um, 18 quid for a bag of 100 and I needed about eight. So we then decided to go for um, an adhesive and there's thousands of adhesives and when you look online it, it's not really clear which ones to use for this sort of board. So in the end I got the one that's called Sticks Like and um, they had a deal on it, two for a tenner. So I decided to give it a go and it's amazing. So I've stuck these little bits of fireboard on here and it grabs straight away so you don't have to hold it up or anything. Now that these, these have been on 10 minutes and I can't move them. So I'll put the fireboard on top of that. Um, and that allows for a 12 mil air gap behind. One bit of fireboard at 12 mil, a second bit of fireboard at 12 mil, and then a piece of cement board at about another 12 mil. So it should be super safe. And I might even use this to stick the tiles onto the cement board because it is, the bond's unaffected by temperatures as high as 100 degrees C. So that'll be an easy way of doing it and a lot less messy than tile adhesive. All I'll have to do then is grout the tiles in. So the hearth and the surround is coming on nice and quickly now. Oh dear, I made a bit of a faux pas last night. I glued the two fireboards together and laid them flat on this bit of ply but there was a bit of glue underneath and now I've stuck them to the ply. So Henry's trying to figure out how to get it unstuck. I've got it free now. Oh, have you? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Oh, well, at least it proves the glue works. <laughs> well, after we got the um, fireboard unstuck from the plywood, I spent the rest of the day fixing it um, behind here and tiling on top of it. I used the sticks like to tile it, brilliant. It just takes no time at all. Um, and I've laid the slate down onto a proper tile adhesive. And I'm just going to grout it now with black fire cement. Um, it's what I could get today. And I didn't want white because, well, white's not a very good idea around a fire. I thought the black would look quite nice and it will uh, contrast quite well with these tiles. So these were all left over from my kitchen um, that we sort of built over lockdown, my kitchen at home. Um, so it's really nice not to have to buy any new ones. And there's still a box left, so I might just be able to squeeze out enough for the kitchen on the boat and then it'll tie in nicely together and um, yeah I think it looks quite nice so this will be finished more or less today we're going to put a wooden trim around the whole thing and around the half because uh, these slates are quite pointy on the corners and we don't want to be stubbing our toe on it so um, I think that would look nice edged. So thanks to everybody on um, the friendly Narrowboat Forum, forum and uh, Narrowboat Interiors that showed me their pictures of their fireplaces. That was really helpful. Okay, and I'll show you how far we've got with the dinette as well. Well, while I'm waiting for the tiles to dry off, I'm just going to see what's happening over here. Where have we got to? Got a bit backwards, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it went backwards from yesterday. Um, I'm, I'm, I am actually going forward today, so that's good. I've been sorting out the runners for the um, table, which will form the base bed here. And I've just got the answer to it, so I'm quite pleased about that. You're going to put that bit of wood in? Yeah, the way it's going to work, this is on both sides. Um, 
it will go just underneath the edge of the seat like that. Right. And then the table's going to drop down onto here. And that will be that. Okay, nice great. And simple. Paint all that the same colour then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've used up just about all of the um, wood as well now that we got from that table, so that's a bonus. Excellent. Yeah. No, so these works. benches are going to be really deep, aren't they? They're going to have loads of storage. Yeah, I can demonstrate that. <laughs> Ignore the gaffer tape. Work in progress. Okay. We've curved them, I probably said already, but we've curved them back so that our heels won't kick the base so much. Yeah, it works really well actually, I've tested it all. So in there, you can see right to the bottom, but there's some runners there, so there's going to be a drawer going along there, and then a base, and then, in fact, there's a bit of a base there. But yeah, that'll go all the way along. Yeah, and then we'll be able to keep all the bedding and so on in one of them. Um, probably in the other we'll keep a load of briquettes for the fire because uh, we don't want to be burning anthracite or any of that other horrible stuff. We'll be able to um, also um, run some kind of um, ducting underneath all of this lot and underneath the cupboards in the kitchen to give us the extra airflow that we're going to need okay. the stove. And then down here, I'm still t deciding what to put on the floor, but I think I might follow through and get another pack of um, bamboo because I think that will all match. Today we were cycling through Brighton Marina and we spotted one of those floating houseboats that was down at the boatyard a few weeks ago. It doesn't look quite so posh here. I think it's those blinds on the back for privacy, I suppose. Anyway, there must be another two of them down here somewhere. It's a real old mix down here. And then just the other side of the marina, we're just cycling along the undercliff path very yachty out there today lots of small boats out towards the wind farm I don't know if you can just see that out there and we're by the sea wall where the sea is actually ooh, splashing up every now and again hopefully not going to catch us unawares all the pebbles on the promenade where the waves have washed them up so you always have to time your cycle along here carefully. There's a well-known beach along here where Flotsam and Jetsam washes up and we found this fender. Brilliant. <laughs> Annoyingly there's another one just over there out of reach and the tide has turned and it's just starting to go back out so I'm not sure if it's going to get blown in. How frustrating. Well this is my last job for the week um, and I'm sitting on a bit of foam because the sound quality was terrible filming into tiles. I think it's just bouncing around so I'm just trying to make it a bit better. Anyway, done all the tiles, grouted them, and I'm doing that usual thing of cleaning them a million times to try to get the smearing off, but it's nearly there, and they look nice. I've just finished um, dressing the slates with this um, slate dress oil, which smells lovely, like linseed oil or something like that. And it's brought them up really shiny, I'll show you. So they look really nice now and all that sort of white bloom has disappeared. So next week Henry's continuing with the dinette, finishing that off. And then he's going to put a wood surround around this. And then I'm going outside because I've got scaffolders arriving next week to uh, put a framework up around the boat 
so that I can paint it. So I've been thinking about this job for months and preparing for it because it's a massive job. Um, and I'll show you my design next week, my ideas, and the trials and tribulations of painting a narrowboat. Can't say I'm really looking forward to it, but it's got to be done and uh, it costs a fortune to have it done by someone else. Between an eight and 11 grand for a boat this size. So there's no way we're paying that. So I'm going to do it myself. Anyway, that's all for now and see you on the next video. Bye.